I'm not going to make you sit through a load of pointless uh, information that you might not need. The simple solution to this one is run SAM Broadcaster in compatibility mode in Windows. That's worked for me. I can't guarantee it'll work for you, but uh, I've had it running now continuously for about three weeks uh, as opposed to it crashing once every two days on Windows 11 Pro in this case. And uh, I'm running it as Windows 7 in Windows 7 compatibility mode. I think you could probably do this on Windows 8 compatibility mode as well, but that's all you need to change. It's really straightforward. You can just go to the uh, properties of the executable file, the SAM executable file, or indeed the shortcut to that file, and you have a section in Windows 11 under compatibility, and you can just set that there to uh, run in Windows 7, and I had I had it, che it checked to run as administrator as well. I'm not too sure if that's necessary, but they're the two things that I've changed, and they're the things that have made it work for me, and I've not had any problems since. So just to give you a little more detail, if you're interested, I uh, run a playout system in the house, which just uh, sends music out in a kind of radio format. It's just something that I've always liked to do. I, I don't like the fact that streaming services mean that people are constantly flicking between tracks. They are cha changing track. They play 20 seconds of a song. Oh, try this, try this, change the track, change the track. I like the idea of radio. I like the idea of a broadcast playout system with slightly processed audio giving a sort of nice normalized sound. I'll use the word normalized because uh, I think it's one a word that people are more familiar with. So uh, equal levels across the different tracks, uh, but also processed in a much more complex way for broadcast. I like that sort of system and I like the idea that you don't always know what's coming on next and you don't have that ability to change it. If, if a song comes on that you don't like or don't like as much, then you listen to it like you would the radio. However, I don't like commercials on radio because commercials are just horrible on radio. So I have a playout system that just plays music all the time, music that I like, music that I add to, and I can listen to it in the house. And it works for me. So that's the reason I use Sam. However, I updated it to uh, Windows uh, 11 uh, because I wanted to put it onto a small PC, you know, just a kind of um, like a silent PC. Uh, and... I've done that now, but I had problems with it. As soon as I moved on to Windows 11, it just was crashing every other day. And if you go to the event log, you can actually see some weird things happening. Sometimes it can't read from the the flat the flak decoder, and other times it has problem with NTDLL as well, which is bizarre. I mean, I wouldn't see why that would that would come into it. But there's other things as well, other random stuff happening in the event log where there are just failures and then you get a couple of failures over say a few hours and then the whole system just stops working completely and you just have to right click and end the task and then start SAM again and it'll run okay for another couple of days. That's the problem I was having with SAM and that's been seemingly fixed by this uh, compatibility mode. So if you're out there and you're using SAM uh, then hopefully this will help you. Uh, if you haven't tried this already, but uh, there are definitely some problems with uh, Windows 11. Just on the, he's talking about SAM generally. I mean, I, I've shifted to the most recent version of SAM. I was on 2014 originally, which did work with Windows 11, and I thought, okay, an upgrade would be good. And um, although it's good that they haven't changed much in the last nine years, really, uh, nine, probably 10 years nearly, it's good that they haven't changed much because, of course, you don't want to update too many things. If you've got, like, databases set up, you've got categories set up, you don't want a system to completely change and you have to update that all the time. If you're using this professionally, you don't want to have to, uh, like, an IT system to completely change all the time. But I do feel like it does need a bit of love at this stage. It's, it's quite dated in many ways. And uh, it, it really feels like not much has changed at all. There are still some things in there that, are very legacy and very much of a, a bygone era as far as Windows and Windows Audio support is concerned. There's lots of things that you just can't do with SAM that you would maybe think would be more straightforward or more possible. But um, yeah, it's a shame it doesn't seem to have the, the attention, I guess, from a development standpoint as it once has or had, or I guess maybe it's just sitting away and earns them money occasionally. You know, people there probably aren't tons of people buying it. But um, yeah, the focus probably more is on SAM 
cloud, I suppose, now than the actual SAM Broadcaster software. And I can see why that's easier to update and easier to develop, but it's it's way too expensive for the type of thing that I'm using it for. If you're using it for for a proper paid broadcast service, then then yeah, you can you can justify the expense. But the the actual product, the Sam Cloud product, is is just ludicrously expensive as far as storage goes. You know, if I'm if I think I've got probably twenty thousand songs on the system. And the amount of storage, a lot of those are flack as well. If the amount of storage I would need for those on the cloud, the pricing per month would be through the roof. You'd be talking hundreds of pounds per month. So I'm on spatial.com here on the Sam Broadcaster Cloud uh, website where they choose to use this word preeminent. Don't see that very often. And I'm going to go to pricing and just give you an idea of why it's a uh, limitation for me because I'm absolutely sure that the pricing is fine for anybody who makes money off their station. But uh, you'll be able to see here from this kind of pricing that with only 30 gig of storage and 1 to 8 kilobit limitation for $30 a month, I would personally need considerably more storage and I know you can customize the plans but then of course the price goes up so I would probably need 500 gigabytes of storage maybe not quite that and I would definitely want a 256 kilobit stream rest of it I'm not too bothered about because as I say it is just for fun and just something I do uh, to stream around uh, around the house really so yeah $30 a month is is just just too much so the software works for me, a one-off payment for the uh, Sam Broadcaster software that I can then run on a uh, silent PC. Anyway, there you go. Just a bit of a chat about uh, Sam Broadcaster and how to fix that niggly problem potentially in Windows 11 Pro or Windows 11 generally, I hope. And uh, I'll put a few links down in the description to firstly to Sam, uh, the sorry, to uh, Spatial Audio and also for the PC that I use as well. Now that one will be an affiliate link because it's available on Amazon, but I found it really good. It's a little, is it Melee or something? I think the company is, and it's totally fan free. And uh, it's, yeah, so obviously completely silent. When you, when it's running Sam and running the audio processing software, which I which with Sam I happen to use Breakaway, so not Stereo Tool, even though I've covered Stereo Tool a lot in the past. I use Breakaway. Breakaway one, and uh, to th that and Sam running together chugs along nicely at like six, ten percent CPU, barely warm. Well, it is warm to the touch, but totally happy. It's good, good little device. I really like it. Uh, so I'll put links to, to that in the description if you want to support the channel and click on those links. That'd be good. But thanks for watching. And if you are someone who does that sort of thing and prefers to listen to a radio. And if you're, and, and even, actually, I'm going to go further than that and say, if you're someone who, like me, hates this, the whole, where, where you go on to Spotify, you go on to Tidal or, or whatever you happen to use, Apple Music, and you just play one bit of a song and then someone's like, oh, no, 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 listen to this one. Oh, no, 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 listen to this. And they, all you're getting is the beginning of songs, almost like a kind of Fortnite, like like on Fortnite where you just have this small segment of a song and everybody like just knows that small little bit of a song and then says, yes, I know that song. Well, you don't, you just know that small little bit of it and you've never bothered listen to the, listening to the rest. Uh, I don't, I just, not a fan of that. I prefer the, the whole radio sound and the radio feel, like background music, songs on and you can't change them i'm okay i'm okay with that because i put the music on the system in the first place i like most of it you know and the ones that i don't like are probably just album tracks that i just haven't listened to as much and it exposes me to those new songs anyway i could rant on about this for ages and if you accept this rant and you know where i'm coming from just get in touch in the comments let's have a conversation about it because i'd be interested to know who out there has the same feelings as me on this thanks for watching and uh, yeah see you soon